I wanted to show you a little bit about how we can use Fusion together with Dynamo for something like uh, panel design. I have a regular surface here, just I created with T-splines, and I brought it into uh, to Dynamo. It's just a non-standard shape, it doesn't really matter what. If you don't know how to import, you can look at some of my other videos, uh, I can show you how to import that. But uh, now that it's here, I went into the toolbox for Lunchbox. It's a third party provider. They provide all kinds of little code snippets. And some of them are for creating panel walls. And this one here is called a quad panel, um, a quad panel divider. So it takes this surface um, that I can hook up here and it divides it into regular U and V sub segments. U and V is like the X and the Y locally on the surface itself. It's corresponding to the to the X and Y, so to speak, in the local coordinate system. <clears throat> and I decided to split this surface up into an equal number, so I just created a integer slider, hooked it up, and you can see that at uh, just one division, there's no uh, division in the surface, it can't really get the whole surface uh, form um, well-defined. But if I push the slider up and I wait a couple seconds for Dynamo to update, you can see that I get a whole series of little panels that are in this case quad square. And not only do I get the panels, I also get a bunch of points. And the points are really handy. I can use those for all kinds of secondary operations. And um, I decided to do a little experimenting. Um, I'm gonna take these points and I'm gonna give each one a little sphere. So uh, I'm going to set up a bunch of little spheres on each one of these points. And to do so, I'm going to go to the geometry selection or geometry creation tools and type in sphere in the search. And I can do a center point sphere. So here I'm just going to take those points and I'm going to hook them up to the sphere center point. And now I need to give the um, spheres a radius. And to do so, I'm going to do a number slider and I'm going to hook that up. Uh, as well and um, it takes a little while I can um, uh, modify the number slider to give it a maximum minimum and a step size of course and um, it takes a little while after I've done it um, but you'll see that eventually the program will run it will create the little spheres there they are and in another second or two the radius size will be correct um, I'm fooling about with the slider, so I'm not giving the system any time to update. But after a minute or two, there they are. You can see them all. And I was uh, impatient again, so I changed that size once again. And each time I'm waiting for the system to catch up while it's doing its calculations. It's calculating quite a number of spheres, but I'm getting a really kind of interesting um, set of volumes. It looks like a surface from here, but it's really a bunch of spheres that are each on each one of those points. But that's a nice looking um, kind of geometry and some people might like to work with that, might wanna do something with that. It's just an idea. In any case, uh, the next thing you're gonna do is export all those, but you can see that the um, spheres are all in sublists because it basically splits the spheres up into each sphere being on one of the UV lines. So before I export this, I'm gonna flatten that list. Instead of having it a list with a, uh, a bunch of sublists, I'm going to make one giant list out of it, all of them a one. That's a command called flatten. And that makes that list into one giant list without um, a UV line one and then all the spheres on it, UV line two with all the spheres on that line. So as a result, I get a flat list. And then I can do a file path to tell the system um, where I want to export my file two, it's gonna be a SAT file of course, and I have to tell it where to store it. I'm gonna call it output, and I'm gonna save it someplace on my local machine. And then I'm gonna use the command export to SAT. Now, if you don't know how to do this, this is another one of the um, parts of my very beginner's video videos where you can do import of Fusion Geometry and export back into Fusion. So if you haven't done that before and you're confused by this, go look at some of my other videos. Now. So this is now exported a file, and if I go into Fusion and then say load that file in from a uh, load that uh, geometry in from a file, um, I can go get that file that I just created, 
And then after several minutes, I did speed it up here. After several minutes, you'll get all these 5,280 spheres or whatever it is. It's a gigantic number. So it does say, take some time. And if you're happy with that, that's great. But I decided to experiment a little bit. And I was looking at this and I was thinking, you know, these spheres are all very regular. They're all exactly the same. Sometimes things get a little bit interesting when you add a little bit of irregularity to them. So I thought about a couple different ways to do that. I could have uh, translated the spheres, some of the spheres up and down, maybe move them, shift them left and right. But in this case, I decided let's mess about with the radii. Let's not make them all exactly the same size. Let's give some random nature to them. So I went back into Dynamo and instead of using the number slider, for the radius of the spheres as I had before, I decided to make a random number generator. And this is another, um, I'm gonna replace that number slider. This is another command. So I put in random, and there's a whole bunch of uh, random commands, but also in Lunchbox, there's a random number generator. It's quite useful and I use it for all kinds of things. So I created that, uh, that node, a random number sequence, yeah. There you see it right there. And um, basically I can do several things with this one. I can tell the system I would like to have a minimum number and I would like to have a maximum number. So I only get values between the two of those. So I'm gonna define a minimum by using the number command, which just allows me to find a one-time number. I think I put in something like uh, three or something like that. I can't see it, but anyway, that's something like that, and then a max, which I put in there by a control C and a control V, so copy paste. And then the number of, of values that I wanna generate is the same as the number of spheres. And since the numbers of spheres is not constant, depending on the number of uh, divisions I make, I use the command count here. So I can count those points. I hook those up and I can actually get a count and that's just a number. And so that will always reflect the same number as the number of spheres in the whole um, system. And so I can hook that up to the number. And so my list will change size with the number of spheres that I have. The last um, variable here is a seeding variable. It's something that the system uses in order to generate a random sequence of numbers. So I create a number uh, node here as well. And really, it doesn't matter what you put in here. It's just a seed value that the system uses to generate a bunch of random numbers. You could put anything in there. So I did that. And then I hooked that uh, list up to my radii. And so now for every single um, sphere that it creates on those center points, it will then go to the corresponding place in that list and take the radius that has been placed into that list by the random number generator. Now, I was looking at this and I was again a bit impatient because it's calculating and running through its systems. But I decided that the variation between the small spheres and the big spheres was really quite not quite big enough. I wanted to be really noticeable. So I went into the numbers and I changed the minimums and the maximums to make them a little bit more extreme. So they had a bigger variation between the minimum that I allowed and the maximum that I allowed. And after I do that, and it calculates for a couple minutes, you'll be able to see that those uh, spheres um, all get different sizes. There you go. Um, you may or may not like this effect. It doesn't really matter. But the point is, here again, I have still have my export hooked up. And then after a couple minutes, uh, after my import or my export, I can get this geometry into Fusion and I can begin using it for any number of other things. And the idea behind this is that you'll be able to use these kinds of commands to do any number of other things. Now, I do hope this was useful for you.